Welcome back to our textbook on sustainability management. This is the introductory screencast on chapter A4, which is on sustainability strategies, some general approaches on how to achieve sustainability. After reading this chapter, you will be able to do a couple of things. First, you will be able to discuss why a decoupling of human development on the one hand and ecological impact of humanity on the other end is necessary to achieve sustainable development because sustainable development is more than just ecological issues, it's also social issues. So human development and ecological impact are two very important elements of sustainable development. We will explain different strategies of sustainability, that is basically eco-efficiency, eco-effectiveness and sufficiency. And we will have a look at the different opportunities and challenges of these strategies for sustainable development. First of all, eco-efficiency aims at a relative improvement through a quantitative reduction of resources and emissions in products or processes in a linear way from so-called cradle to grave. So from the beginning of the raw materials extraction until the disposal of the product. The second strategy that is eco-effectiveness. Eco-effectiveness aims at an absolute decoupling of the two elements of economic development, human development and of environmental burden through closed loops. So rather from having a linear perspective on production consumption, we're now going to have a look at a circular um, perspective from so-called cradle to cradle so that the byproducts of all uh, the, the waste and by byproducts of any product become uh, resource and raw materials again for other products. That's the main aim of eco-effectiveness. And finally, sufficiency as the third general strategy, um, uh, that is a rather behavior-based concepts, while the others two are often more technical sometimes. Um, sufficiency instead asks for what is an appropriate level of consumption or what are appropriate forms of consumption. So how do we as individuals consume and how can companies enable a more sustainable consumption for us? Then we will critically reflect on why a combination of all these three strategies might be necessary to achieve sustainable development and we will learn that hybrid approaches might be necessary to achieve a decoupling depending on different circumstances on the respective products on the production processes also on the consumption patterns on cultural contexts, and so on so that one strategy might not be enough that you have to engage with several of them. And finally, we will have a look and you will be able to explain how different types of so-called rebound effects uh, materialize and why they could lead to an overall rising impact despite increased eco-efficiency, eco-effectiveness or sufficiency. So in general, the, the, the rebound effect describes the situation of a stagnating or sometimes even rising overall impact despite success in any of the three strategies. And we will have a look how that, um, yeah, how that comes into play, how that can be possible. Features of sustainability in society, research, business are manifold in this chapter here. We will start off with a feature on sustainability in society having a look at the very complex relationship between growth and income and also personal happiness and how far are they related or aren't they related and what's the what does this have to do with sustainability and sustainability management we will then uh, have a look at sustainability in research uh, citing hart's 1995 article on the natural resource based view of the firm a very interesting read then we have a feature on sustainability in business, a feature on an unsuccessful example, actually, of one of these strategies, how Puma's clever little bag failed. It's indeed a really clever little bag, but in the end it was not successful, and we will have a look why. In the faces of sustainability, you will get to know the, uh, the faces, fathers, behind the idea of the cradle-to-cradle -cradle approach. That is an element of this eco-effectiveness strategy. You'll see it here in this picture on the right. There are different um, ways to close the loop to achieve really in a circular economy. 
uh, in the blue uh, side here you see technical loops and on the green side you see biological loops and we will dig deeper into how um, this works in the chapter and uh, by discussing um, the uh, persons of William McDonnell and um, Michael Braungart. Then we have two features of sustainability in business. Again, we will have a look at the circular economy. So this cradle to cradle approach at the company interface. And we will also have a very interesting um, feature on sufficiency approaches at the outgear um, company Patagonia who really engages in sufficiency uh, also in their business models quite extensively. And finally, we will have a look at the feature on business, or, sorry, sustainability in society with the so-called Jevons paradox. The Jevons paradox is a uh, prototypical typical example, a historical example of the rebound effect. Um, it relates to the United States in the areas of the gold rush, the Wild West. Very interesting. Um, even at that point of time, people knew about the rebound effect and we will have a look why.